This month's tabletop review is for Smash Up, designed by Paul Peterson and published by AEG. It's for two to four players and plays in about 30 minutes per game. Um, it can go a little bit higher or lower depending on the amount of players, but the goal is to be the first player to reach 15 points by destroying the bases that are on the table with the army that you create. You create your army by selecting two factions and mixing them together together, which is why it's called Smash Up. There are a bunch of different factions like aliens, zombies, kittens, princesses, monsters, werewolves, all sorts of different armies or faction types. And as you get more expansions, you can actually create even more combinations. It's a great little game. It's a lot of fun. It was actually the second game in my collection. So let's go down to the table and have a quick look. So the components are the rule book, the cards for the bases and for the factions, and then you have these little tokens to mark victory points and the power that is on each base. Now the tokens only come in the expansion, so if you only have the base game, I definitely recommend either picking up an expansion or getting some poker chips. Now, I gave the theme a 3 out of 5. As you can see here, there are a lot of different themes uh, that vary for each faction, and they kind of feel pasted on, but they also sort of work with each faction. So that's why it got a 3 out of 5. The themes we have here are vampires, ninjas, the robot gorillas, and then the pixies, but there are dozens of themes, especially if you pick up the expansions. There are also themed bases for each faction, and there are bases that come in every one of the expansions expansions as well. So it's definitely worth picking up the expansions if you want to grow the amount of theme that you have in this game. Now the artwork I gave 5 out of 5 and the reason for that is because the artwork fits the theme for each faction. While the theme itself feels pasted on for the gameplay, the artwork definitely fits each faction. You can see the variability in all of these different factions, the ninjas and the vampires, the gorilla robots and the pixies all have great artwork. It's consistent and very high quality. You can see the artwork even on the rule book is very, very good. So this one again gets five out of five. The mechanisms are also five out of five. It's very well executed. It's simple to learn and it's challenging to master all of the combinations. The strategy is incredible. All you have to do is pick your two factions, shuffle them together, and then you play with the two factions and try and make them work together. So it's a great game to, to add a lot of depth because there are so many differences between each of the factions. So it allows you to do a lot of different things things. And it's very, very simple to learn. So you just take your cards and you play them on the base or the actions to varying effects that can help or hurt your opponents or yourself. And then you just simply mark the power with the victory token. So it's a great little mechanism that's very simple to pick up and can take some time to really master. So the depth of this game is really, really good. The rule book I gave five out of five because it's, it explains the game very, very well. In the amount of time it's taking me to flip through this rule book, that's about how long it took for me to learn the game. I read through it twice very quickly and I picked up the rules to the game very quickly. It's not a super difficult game to pick up and learn and that's very consistent with AEG games. They're just really, really good at making good rule books. The components, the cards are are okay, but they could be better. I've had a couple of cards that split when shuffling or pulling out of the packaging, so it kind of is difficult. I definitely recommend sleeving your games if that's something that you enjoy doing. The tokens are high quality with a good linen finish, but some of them do tear while being punched out. So again, the components have a three out of five. All right, so let's go over the pros and cons just a little bit. The cons are that the cards don't hold up to shuffling a whole lot. I have a few that have started to split and that's kind of disappointing, but it's not a huge deal. If you want to go the extra mile and sleeve your cards, that would definitely help with this game. I don't do that because of the expense and the work involved, but it would definitely help the cards live a little longer. Also, the base game does not come with the tokens that mark victory points and base damage. So if you want to get 
those, then you definitely need to get an expansion or two to really have enough um, to, to mark your progress in the game. So I used poker chips early on until I got an expansion, but it's definitely uh, still worth getting. The pros are, again, the rule book. The rule book is always incredible. This seems to be very consistent across the AEG catalog. So it's a really good thing to get. And the artwork is incredible. I love the artwork in this game. They're really good. And it just it's another consistency with AEG. Their artwork always seems to blow me away way. So overall, this game has a rating of 21 out of 25, and I definitely recommend picking this one up and either starting your collection with it or adding it to your collection. The mood for this game is fun, light, and a great gateway game. It's a great game to get people into the hobby. If you're wanting to get a combat game that's a little bit past Battleship, there's some good strategy in there. It's not too heavy, so it, it's not really overwhelming to a new player into the hobby. So I definitely, again, recommend picking this one up. Until next week, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really love it if you would tell me what you thought of this video in the comments. If you agree with me, you disagree with me. If you have any thoughts or opinions, I'd love to hear it. You can also tweet me at Arthur Rhetorical on Twitter. You can find me on Patreon and Facebook as Rhetorical Entertainment. If you're not subscribed yet, click that little button down there. Also, if you want to see something cool, click the little button over there. I don't know where it leads, but you're going to find out if you click on it. All I can tell you is that whatever's there is pretty awesome. So until next time, thank you so much for watching.